Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We got Dude Buddy, the Nightcap OG, Scott Boffman. Scott, how are you? Mark, I'm doing great. Good to be here. I'm fired up to see you, my man. Fired up. Good to be here. Speaking of fired up, we got the technician, Eric Peterson, taking time away from the grill to send us knowledge, knowledge bombs. Eric Peterson, how are things? I'm good. Good to see you. We've got Taria putting in the reps. Harris, Taria, how are things in Atlanta? They are coming along. Good to see you. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, he's raising kids. He's raising tortoises. He's raising all our spirits. Tate, how are you? I'm good. I'm doing really well. Good to see you. Last but not least, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how's the donut this morning? Donut was great, man. Really, really good donut. Really good. It was really good. Okay, Every well, morning. I think that's a really good segue to bring up our roundtable discussion. Because when you look at Scott Todd and you see how spelt, how fit, how trim, his skin's glowing. The idea that this guy is eating a donut every single freaking morning is hard to believe. It actually makes me think, is Scott Todd trustworthy when he says he's eating a donut every morning, which then relates to our virtual assistants. How do we know that and trust that our virtual assistants are working hard, they're not making mistakes? Do we go behind and, and check their work? What do we do to make sure that we can trust our virtual assistants? That is our topic. Let's start with the nightcap OG. Scott Bossman, what are your thoughts? Well, I get to start today because Mike's on vacation. Excellent. Um, all right. Well, I mean, let's just keep it simple. Uh, when I hire VA, there are a few things I'm looking for right away. <clears throat> the quality of their work, the timeliness of their work, uh, the energy <clears throat> excuse me, that they seem to be putting forth to complete the task, uh, and you know their energy interacting with me. So those are the things I look at. And you know when you're hiring out one task, uh, you may want to hire a couple people to do that task to then evaluate those different things. And that's that's what we've done. You know, if a VA is putting forth good quality work in a timely fashion, they seem motivated to work with me. I may put more on their plate if they're willing to do that, and it may grow into a little bit more uh, of a position. So. Those are the things uh, I look at. And do I evaluate their work? Sure. Uh, especially if it's a new VA, I'm looking at the quality of their work. Okay, great. I'm going I'm to ask a, just a, a separate question from that as far as trusting the quality of the work. But have you ever experienced a virtual assistant being completely untrustworthy in the sense that they took a password or they made a purchase without your consent? They did something unethical, which would break trust. I've never had that happen where, I, where a VA has acted in an unethical fashion. Okay. There you have it. Which leads us to the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how do you establish trust with your virtual assistants? I think what, what Scott said is a great place to start. I think knowing uh, the task that we're asking our VA to do, in other words, being familiar with it, hopefully having done it yourself, gives us a baseline to compare to. So if we go out and hire two or three or five VAs to do the same work, we have a baseline that we can compare the amount of time they're taking and the quality of the work that they're turning in. And, you know, a lot of times you'll find that you're not the expert in something. And as we begin to outsource those things, we'll find a VA that can do that much faster than, than we might be able to do it. Um, and when we compare that to other VAs, we might see similar results. We might see different results, but ultimately 
um, when we're working with multiple BAs doing the same thing, we can really look at the quality of their work and the timeliness um, and efficiency of it and determine who's the best fit for our business um, based on who's going to accomplish the most and, and do it most effectively. I think um, beyond that, using tools that we have access to, like LastPass, gives us a level of protection where we don't have to be super concerned about giving a VA access to a certain account if we use LastPass, because the reality is if anything goes wrong, we can turn that off in an instant by logging into LastPass and revoking their, their access. We don't have to change a password. We don't have to do anything other than just click a button to remove them from that account and they can no longer access it. Um, so, you know, those are some steps we can take to, to kind of build that trust, I guess, over time. Yeah. Um, speaking of LastPass, they, they changed their, their billing. I actually went to one password and it's very Mackey. Um, the UI is, is, is gorgeous compared to the people that might be on a, I don't know, a surface and eating, you know, software or gruel, right? Um, one password is beautiful. So, but so Eric, not to digress, have you ever lost trust in a virtual assistant to do something unethical? Yeah, I was thinking about that when you asked Scott and I, I actually have... A situation with a VA that I had for a long time um, that I had a, a pretty high level of trust with that uh, basically the, the role he was doing for me, uh, I kind of phased it out of the business and he, he wasn't doing any work for a period of time for me. And I asked him to come back and do something else. And what I noticed was that he was billing me for the maximum amount of hours that he was allowed. And he did that for a couple of weeks in a row. I asked him about it because I was very suspicious, um, being that I knew it shouldn't take that long. And, you know, first he claimed it was a mistake and, uh, you know, offered to make up for it. And I continued to watch him. And over time, he did it again. And the second time, you know, I just said, we're not going to work together anymore. I, I can't trust you any longer. Um, it wasn't like I lost a lot. Um, you know, I mean, this VA was getting paid, I don't know, probably around $4 an hour. And we're talking about maybe five hours max a week. So it wasn't a lot of money. But to me, when I see someone billing me for time that I know is is too much for the work they're doing, or is, you know, maybe they didn't even do any work and they're billing me, um, you know, I'm going to give them a chance to correct it the first time. But if it happens again, that's that's it. We're not working together anymore because I don't, I'm not looking for VAs that I have to babysit and watch all the time. I want VAs I can trust. I can put them to work and I know they're going to accomplish the task and bill me appropriately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is, what's that Warren Buffett quote? He, he looks for people with high energy, high intelligence, high integrity. And he's like, without the integrity, the other two don't really make a difference. Yeah, for sure. Um, but you, you know, it's, it's slow going. Someone won't reveal it right away. It's, it takes time, which is uh, unfortunate. There's a Marcus Aurelius quote in there somewhere about how, how people, you know, just to have that expectation, someone's going to let you down today. You don't know who, but just expect it kind of thing. Um, Taria. Putting in the reps, Harris, how about you? How do you work with your virtual assistants as far as the trust component is concerned? I think in the beginning, it was a little bit tougher. We were a little skeptical, like our first VA. And so we would go into Upwork periodically and just, you know, manage her hours or gauge her hours against, you know, what she was billing us. Um, and then as we noticed that she operated in integrity and for the most part got, you know, the job done and got it done well, we were able to kind of back off. And that set the tone for 
all the other PAs that we hired after that. It was kind of the initial one where we were like, okay, wait a minute, you know, she's overseas, you know, she's logging into our accounts. And, but once we got that out the way and realized it, it works, you know, and not, not everyone is a crook, um, we were able to then begin hiring more uh, VAs. And so like Scott and Eric, I'll kind of mock monitor what they do. There's a period of training that we take them through to make sure they understand the job, they understand the requirements, um, the responsibilities. And then from there, you know, we may monitor, you know, for a week or so. Um, and then from there, unless you do something overtly, you know, wrong, we may not notice. But what we also have is a really good system in place where our VAs all kind of work together. So if one is not doing their part or doing their share, the others will speak up, you know, well, hey, I was going to do this, but I didn't have any ads or I was going to do this, but, you know, it wasn't added to the website or whatever the case is. So we function as a real big unit so that, that if one person, you know, like a tripod, if one of the legs is missing, then it's pretty obvious that something is going on. Um, we've only been burned one time. Um, it was early on. We had a VA who our first uh, VA we hired to write ads. And we told her the rules and she went and literally took someone's ad verbatim and then posted it in the land geek uh, group. And so we ended up getting messages from the people whose ad she stole. Um, and we, we, we let her go immediately. Wow. That was one of the, one of the things we said, you cannot plagiarize someone else's work. And that's pretty obvious. So that's been the only big issue where integrity was involved, where we've experienced with the VA. Okay. That, I mean, that's bad, but it's not like overbilling bad or, you know, yeah, no. log, you know, Correct. getting into your bank account bad. Correct. You just stole someone's ad, which yeah. is minor in the grand scheme of things. But if I can't trust you, then I'm with Eric. I, I can't work with you. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I think that, you know, it's important what you said in the beginning. You, first of all, this is early on, right? You were just kind of learning how to train virtual assistants. I bet it was either bad luck or some type of failure to communicate the quote unquote rules in a way where it was super crystal clear. This is what we expect with the ad. Now, I could be completely wrong. You probably did. And, but if you're listening, <laughs> you know, we did, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're, and you're At new least we to thought it. We did. You know, you, you know, like I forget the, the book I was, I'm thinking of is, uh, it's Simon Sinek. He's talking about the law, the infinite game. Right. And the idea that most people are very honest and have integrity where they want to be. Mm -hmm. But if you set up a structure, let's say, oh, I don't know. Let's just say a company. I don't know. Throw it out of the, in the air. Oh, Wells Fargo right? Where they're getting compensated in a way where there's a tremendous amount of pressure to do things that are not ethical, then human beings will succumb to that pressure. It's very, very difficult, especially if that's the culture. So it's something to, to think about in, when you're setting this up with your virtual assistant to be Taria Harris clear about the rules about the boundaries, your expectations, and what happens if you cross it. And right. doing that from the very beginning, I think saves you a lot of time and also makes them more comfortable. We're, we feel safer when we have these clear boundaries and they know, oh, if I step over this line, Tree and Landon are cutting my head off and now I got to go deal with someone else, right? Um, so, I forgot where I was going with that, Taria. <laughs> well, moving forward, like we we took that. And so moving forward and we got better with, you know, understanding how to communicate what it is we wanted and needed and what was expected. So even if we didn't do a good job in the beginning, it just kind of, it became better as time went on. All right. We became better. That's, yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. You're you're managing an army of virtual assistants. Have you ever yeah. 
ever been have had your trust ever been lost um uh yeah, at different levels of it, right? I mean, as you mentioned earlier, some of these VAs make three, four, five dollars an hour, and look, they need a kick in the pants frequently. A lot of them, and it's okay. Like I've I've gone into the hiring process knowing that I'm going to have to keep an eye on these individuals, and that's because they are, you know, I get what I pay for in a lot of instances. So yeah, I've had VAs milk jobs you know, I can do the job in an hour and it's taken them 90 minutes. And it's kind of one of those things where you got to pick and choose your battles. It's like, well, is it worth going through the effort to hire and train and do all of this over again, you know, because I, I want to get the job down from $5 an hour to $3? Like, I don't know. So I've got a lot of people who are kind of milking it. They're slow dragging their feet. I've had people do some things that I disagreed with. We've had some differences. Yeah, I mean, that's just part of running a business, right? You're going to have people that you don't get along with and who don't see eye to eye with what I'm doing. And, you know, we trust that verify. And I'm glad you brought up Scott Todd and the donut eating because this is something that we need to verify, right? And so, Scott, we're going to need some hard evidence here going forward. I, It's not that I don't trust you that you're eating a lot of donuts. I mean, I believe you, but I'd like to know what you're eating, man. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, Tay. But, you know, oh, no. it's the same principle with my VAs, right? I trust you to do a good job, but I'm going to verify it. And after you do a good job three, four, five weeks in a row, I'm going to give you a little bit more slack. And look, every single person who comes into this business should expect to have some things go the wrong way for them. That's normal. Right, As right. You mentioned, <laughs> I have a follow-up question for you because you're managing okay. so many people. Let's say that you've got a virtual assistant, you know, they're showing, you know, really good potential. They're working hard. They're coming in on time. They're doing all the things you're asking for them and more. They're like what we call an A player. They're thinking mm -hmm. for themselves. And so you get to a point where like, you don't have to manage them as closely. Right. Do you find a point of complacence? where all of a sudden their work starts to slip a little bit. The communication isn't as frequent. For sure. I mean, that, how, do you, that how do you handle that? I mean, ideally you want to be in an eat what you kill situation. Cause I think that's motivating, right? If you're in a situation where you don't perform, you don't eat, there's no complacency in that. Why? Because the only way to pay your bills is to continue to perform. That's not always going to be the case. Occasionally, you're going to need to shake the tree. And that's why I say, you know, keep a little pressure on some of these VAs. I'll go to my VAs regularly and say, wait a second, how come our numbers are down? Right. And so the way that I hold my VAs to a high level of to a high standard is I have a baseline benchmark that they better hit every single month or every week. Otherwise, we have issues. The minute it dips below that, OK, I get it. Holidays, whatever it is. If it happens two times in a row, it's like, okay, you've got, you're on probation, essentially. You either outperform me and I want to be, have my socks blown off this next month, or you're going to need to look for employment elsewhere. Hire fast, fire fast. Who says that? Is it Scott um, Todd? I think he's I think it's Scott that. Todd. I think yes. I've said it. I'm pretty sure I've said it too. Or Eric Peterson. I don't know. Hire yeah. fast, fire fast. Uh, but there's so many land geek isms. We can't even keep track with it anymore. Yeah. So much who to, who to attribute it to. Um, okay, well, now, last but not least, Krispy Kreme himself, Scott Todd. <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by Krispy Kreme. The best way to start in the morning, you lose weight. Listen, I don't always take a picture of my breakfast, but when I do... I'm happy to share it with you guys. And if he needs proof, I will be happy to email him every, no, I'll be happy to box him every morning. Just uh, at around. So it's a chocolate glaze, correct? Well, on this one, on this given day, sometimes it has a little sprinkle to it. Today's had sprinkle to it. But you know what, Tate? I'll tell you what, man. I'm eating that thing around 7 a.m. Eastern time. That's 4 a.m. your time. 
I'll be happy to pop one into your <laughs> box every morning, 4 a.m. Hopefully you don't forget to turn that phone off. And Allison's like, what, what is going on with your phone? Who's texting you? Oh, it's my donut Send- alert. Don't alert. It's my move. It's my food porn showing up at four in the morning. So, yeah. You know, but- essentially. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. So, you know, trust, trust, verify, whatever. It's all good. Um, you know, I think that my, my own personal thought on this is that um, a lot of times when people are outsourcing work, they're, they're scared of, um, they're get, they're scared of getting had, right? You know, it's like, right. They're scared of, of that event that Eric talked about. Oh, well, they, they, they took advantage of me. And the reality is, is that anytime you deal with anybody, any person, that person has the ability of taking advantage of you. That's just the way that it is. Any, any other individual has an ability to take advantage of you. Now, I think that the way that you do this and the way that you offset this is that you have to find, you have to find what works for you. And, you know, one of the things I think, one of the mistakes I think people make when they go to outsource is that they just, they, they don't ever learn something first and then they go and get someone to go do it. And then they don't know what they don't know. They get blindsided, right? Right. Delegating versus abdicating where abdicating is the blind leaving the blind. You know, in flight school, one of the things that I teach is that you always know that it's time to outsource something because you hate doing it. And that's always been the cue to me is, okay, I've done this a few times. I don't like this anymore. And I'm, I'm out. I'm never doing this again. And it was funny because that's, that is, that is the pattern or the recipe that I teach. Find the things that you hate and get rid of it. If you don't like doing it, don't do it. Get somebody else to go do it because you're no good at it. But see, a lot of times people miss that key point. And they go, and I actually had someone ask me like, well, how do I know, uh, how do, I mean, don't I have to do this myself to get good at it first in order to, to, uh, you know, to outsource this, or how do I know that the person's really doing a good job if I don't know it myself? And if you listen to what I said, what I said was find the things that you hate to do and get rid of it. Well, that means that you're actually doing it. Okay. You're actually doing it first and you don't have to be good at it. You just have to go through the, the, the process of it and go, I'm no good at that. I'm it's out. Now there are some things that I wouldn't, wouldn't advocate that you do. Like if you have zero experience or zero train on it, for example, like, you know, if you, if you had, if you had to go do something in, in, in the law, for example, and you're like, well, you know, I got to try it first. Well, that's, that's a little absurd, right? Like that's not to that extreme. So if it's, if it's work in your business, sample it, do it a little bit, but then get rid of it and think about what you want. And I think that when you think about what you want and you bring clarity to that, well, then you know if you're getting the results that you want. And if you're not getting the results that you want and you're watching the time, okay, and you're like, man, this seems a little crazy. And then you go and you verify it with somebody else. Here, do this work for me and see how long it takes you. You don't have to, to, to do this, but business is a series of hypotheses. You're testing all these different things at different times. And ultimately you'll know if somebody's taken advantage of the situation. The challenge though, is this, and it goes back to my, one of my favorite TV shows ever, which is Ozark. And it goes back to this. If you find that they're taken from you and they say, I'm sorry, it's the first time I ever did it. Do you get rid of them or do you give them a second chance? All right, you caught them. They're like, I'm sorry, it's the first time I did it. Do you get rid of them or you give them a second chance? And I think it, Ozark clearly lays the way of what you need to, well, I shouldn't say this. It, it tells you the right answer, not necessarily the right execution on how to get rid of somebody. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, well, I think this is a really great topic. And next week we will discuss trust a little bit more um, with buyers and sellers as a uh, as, as we go a little bit deeper into this this issue. But hopefully this is this is helpful. Um, but now we're at that point in the podcast where we're going to ask Taria, putting in the reps Harris for her tip of the week a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before that, we've got to talk about our sponsor. Our sponsor this week is Land Geek Bootcamp. That's right. We're all vaccinated. 
Come, let's all get together live. We've got 20 spots left. Secure your spot. Don't procrastinate. Go to landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp. Vegas, baby, Vegas, August 12th through August 15th. But we need to have a final number very, very soon. Take your spot. Be there. There's nothing like being in the room with Scott Todd, Tate Litchfield, Scott Bossman, Taria Harris. Can you imagine being in the room with Taria? Looking at your Facebook ad? It's incredible. The technician, Eric Peterson, Mike Zeta, he's wicked smart. We're there to help you for two and a half days. I promise you, on Sunday, you will leave there. All the land investing clouds are ahead will dissipate. Everything will be clear. You've got to have the investor's toolkit or be in flight school. Utilize those two free tickets. Be in the room where it happens. Hamilton fans, thelandgeek.com forward slash bootcamp. That's our sponsor. Oh, by the way, speaking of Scott Todd, wouldn't it be great to go up the mountain of land investing with him as your Sherpa? That's right. It's called flight school. 16 weeks. We guarantee you're going to start building passive income. That tuition is not going to cost you nothing. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Get on a call with the nightcap OG, dude buddy Scott Bossman, or the Zen master, Mike Zeno, and learn more. So it's like a two-part two part sponsor this week. But certainly, at the end of the day, you're going to be a better person for it, and it's transformative. So go ahead and do it. Tree Harris, what is your tip of the week? Okay, so here's... Is it near to Tree of Freeze? So I, oh, about she two weeks ago, signed up for, am I here? Can you hear me? Yep, you're back. Okay. 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 So I have been on YouTube um, in addition to watching like a lot of the Land Geek uh, recordings. I found this other, um, I guess, channel. It's called the School of Greatness. And th one thing I like about this particular guy, his name is Lewis Howes. He has some of the most amazing people um, on his uh, podcast and he interviews them from everything, from topics from health to business to mindset to goals. Um, and he interviewed like Tony Robbins, Kobe Bryant. He's interviewed a lot of successful people in their own right. Um, so I recommend that you take a look at his, I guess it's called a podcast. I'm not familiar with no, it. It's YouTube definitely his podcast. <laughs> is it? Okay. Yeah. So look at it. It's his YouTube channel, but he has this a great podcast, podcast as well. The School of Greatness. Yeah, it's really, really good. Um, I can go on there, like just scroll up and look for something with, you know, tips on marketing or, you know, if I'm frustrated, I'm, I'm challenged with whatever aspect of my business. He has had someone on that show that can kind of speak to that. So that's my tip. I love it. I love it. Um, Tria Harris, because Scott Todd's eating so many donuts, what's your fitness tip for him? My fitness tip is to count your macros. And as long as he is getting it within the macros that are appropriate for him, he can have a donut every day. All right. Drop the mic. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners and remind you the only way we're going to be able to bully Taria Harris on a weekly basis to give us these tips of the week is if you do us three little favors, follow us. Rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. All right. Are we ready to do this? One, yeah. two, three, let, let, let freedom, 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 not bad. You know, you know what it's going to be really good at though? Vegas. Vegas and boot camp live. Vegas, baby. Absolutely. Well, how, how are things in Vegas right now, Tate? And they're good, busy, it's hot, but, uh, you know, I don't spend a ton of time downtown on the strip, but, uh, you know, I know a lot of people have been coming to town. The hotels are open. A couple of the buffets are back in business. So Vegas is open for business as far as I know. If, if Eric and I want to get some good Nashville hot chicken, where would we go? Probably Nashville. Nashville. <laughs> okay. 
It's a good answer. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I did see that there's a new uh, hot chicken place that opened up down the street from me. I haven't been there yet, but uh, I, I've never been to Nashville, so I don't have anything like to compare it against. I mean, Mark, uh, yeah, you just uh, we, asked we, the wrong question, though. Like you, you, you I, I mean, why would why would you want to go with Eric to eat Nashville hot chicken when we all know that he only eats ribs? Right. That is that is a good point, but I can imagine just the family wanting a little variety. Well, yeah, you get different seasonings on those ribs. Eric, is that true, or do you just go with the same barbecue sauce? <laughs> We do not cook ribs that often at the Peterson household. There you go. So you just smoke them. I don't smoke them that often either. <laughs> okay. Over the last six months, we've maybe had ribs two times, three times, maybe. Okay. Tate, you right. have Before pictures of every instance, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I've definitely had more ribs than you than this <laughs> past year. Scott Bossman, are you a big rib fan? I love ribs. Uh, just don't have them very often. Don't yeah. Do you, do you think we're going to look back and the treat like the way we've treated animals and like with the same shame as as we do with slavery? Like you know, like can we believe we did this? To, you know. We ate animals like a hundred years I, from now. I, I don't think so. You don't. Come on, Mark. I'll tell you what, I, I saw, you know, that Netflix show, my octopus teacher. I'm not gonna eat I love octopus. There's no way I'm eating another octopus. Be like eating a dog. They're like they're like they're like charming. Ah, uh, that's not true. They're like I'll a pet. have you eaten I'll have you eat an octopus. By the second roll, guaranteed. I, I guarantee if you watch this documentary, you will not. I've seen it. Octopus. It was awesome. And you forgot he had to spend like he had to spend a they're year amazing. with it. Yeah, they're yeah, geniuses. Spend a year with it. Now he's gonna eat it. Well, I wouldn't eat his octopus. I'm not gonna come eat your dog either. But you know, what? That's what I'm saying. It's still a very bright animal. I mean. Food. But they're tasty. It's tasty. <laughs> I, I know they are. I know they're, they're tasty. Not, they're not Two rolls. domestic like it's a dog. <laughs> Two rolls, you're eating octopus, guaranteed. No way. Guaranteed, Mark. I, I can't. A lot of money I can't on after, this. That, after watching that. I don't know. I don't is, know. Anyone, is anyone a vegetarian or, or tried it? I tried it. How'd it go? Not doing it anymore. No, it's hard. It's nice being an omnivore, just to be able to eat whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Donuts and all. I, I mean, you know, to ask the bossman to be a vegetarian, like they kick him out of Wisconsin. Yeah, and that's family disowned me. Yeah, it's like say it's like Sam and I'm not going to stop eating cheese or drinking beer. It's just not socially acceptable. I, listen, I got you know, my macros the, though. You got your Mac. Yeah, that's true. Marco. And I mentioned this like briefly last week, but of all the things that are shocking to me is that in the Harris family, okay. That you would think with all the bone broth that they drink, that they would have the strongest bones around. I don't know. Like seriously. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a great Tari, point. Can you explain that? No, no. <laughs> No question. I I will I will bone, though. bone broth does not help when you get run over by a scooter. That doesn't I, help. I will I will say this though. I, I do stand corrected because I was saying like you know, I was joking that um be, before I knew about getting run over by the scooter, I was saying that, you know. You're not hurting your your ankles just walking to get a donut. That's that's the thing, okay? Like that's really the deal. And then I found out about the scooter incident, and then I felt really really awkward because one, 
I just bought that a scooter similar to that one for my own personal stuff. And now I'm like, I don't know if I should be riding on this thing because karma is going to get me after I made fun of the event before I knew the event. And then uh, like my, my wife and family were, were going to go somewhere. I'm like, oh, don't worry. I'll just ride the scooter over the bridge. And it's a pretty tall bridge. And I'm thinking like, oh, that's a negative. I'm not going downhill on the scooter. I think you're safe as long as you don't ride the scooter to get a donut. Okay. You ride it to get a donut. That's where karma's going to kick you in, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Tr- 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 do, you, do you want to tell the story? Because I don't think everyone knows the story. So um, Landon and I were in Omaha, Nebraska uh, for Olympic trials. And he was walking down to the pool, maybe about a half a mile. And he decided, well, I'll just jump on a scooter. And he got on the scooter takes off and comes down a slight hill and the brakes don't work. So he puts his foot down to stop because he's come into an intersection and, and there are people. So uh, he puts his foot down, the scooter runs over. It kind of gets caught under, his foot gets caught under the scooter and he dislocates and fractures his ankle. It was really so bad. It's really bad. So he's scheduled for surgery here uh, this week or next week. Wow. Okay. Well, keep us updated yes, on all that. Definitely. Um, definitely. We're gonna we're gonna set up a care calendar, a GoFundMe, all of it. We're gonna have it all. We're gonna post it on in Mighty Networks. <laughs> uh, um, look, I'll donate. <laughs> You're gonna have For to donate sure. time. We don't. We don't want money. We want someone to come and you know get his water, or cook his breakfast. Ex- exactly. Healthy. No money. Exactly. No money. On, on a scale of one to ten, ten being like the best patient ever, one being like a, just a complete pain. You probably need to stop what, recording what, if you're gonna ask yeah. this question. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Don't put her in this position, Mark. Come on. I'm just, I'm just curious to win. I'm gonna stop recording. He's, no, he's 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 really good. He's he's, he's a good really patient. Good. Yeah. Wait, that's not what you said before the call. The 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 only time he's annoying is so for example, they lost his scooter in the airport. We're coming back. And I was like, hey, there's a wheelchair, get in the wheelchair. And he's like, absolutely not. So I'm not letting you push me through the airport. So he wanted to be on his crutches at the Atlanta airport, which is busy and big so the only time he's annoying is when i try to be overly helpful and he's like no you're not gonna do that you gotta fix that don't you just take his bad leg leg. (laughs) don't listen to you yeah he got no wheelchair that's what that's what happened to tate 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 wasn't listening to his wife she kicked him it's true i respond well that way right (laughs) yeah (laughs) I respond well that way. Yeah, I, I, I mean, feel like that's a, a baseball bat. Just saying, I got one around here. He has crutches, so those those have been used. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, yep, we're good. All right. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think I made a comment like knowing Landon, he sees those crutches like this is a great tricep workout. It's so bad. And he, all he's talking about is how one leg's going to be bigger than the other one, and yeah, this calf is going to be huge. He'll get over it. it, it it'll even out in time. It's good. <laughs> I hope so. All right. Thoughts and prayers, Landon Harris. Thoughts and prayers. Um, thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see everyone next week. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Read and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.